Can we smoke a pork shoulder in a pizza oven? Today we're going to find out. Hey, I'm James from Smoking Dad Barbecue, and this may seem like an unusual question, but there's a lot of similarities to another smoker I have, which is my offset. Both burn live uh, wood, so we're running a real wood fire. We can stack our fire off to the side in the offset. It's in a burn chamber, but in our pizza oven, we can push everything to one side. Both have a bit of a draft door so we can control how much air is coming into our smoker. And both have a flue or a chimney uh, smokestack that we can adjust and help try and damp down some of that heat and be able to cook low and slow. And so I'm a fan, uh, if we have a tool, can how much utility can we get out of it versus needing to buy a bespoke grill or smoker or pizza oven for every single category. So I don't know if this is going to work or not, but I've picked up myself a, a lovely looking pork shoulder to answer the question, can you smoke in a pizza oven? So game plan. I'll take you back a little bit earlier to catch you up on the overnight dry brine and everything that we did to prep the pork shoulder for today's cook, uh, as well as how we're going to set it up in the oven. But just to walk you through my thinking here in terms of fire management, like our Kamado Joe, the pizza oven uh, has the same three heat properties in terms of conduction heat that we're going to get from our base stations. So that as those ceramic tiles absorb a lot of heat, they're going to have some radiant heat and get some conduction cooking up from the bottom. So to protect against this, my game plan is to use a cast iron pan uh, to make sure that there's no spillage or you know pork oils fats getting onto our stone uh, and then use a, a cooktop so I've got a ceramic coated porcelain sort of half dutch oven if you can call that uh, a cooking dish that I picked up from fogo.com so if you're in the US you're able to get this uh, any order over $100 free shipping uh, and that is the plan to cook above that so we can collect our fat drippings and then as we get close to uh, getting our bark where we want to actually drop our roast down inside of that cover it up uh, so we don't overcook cook the outside and could get to probe tender on the inside. So to do this for our fire, my thinking here is I want to start with a nice hot fire. So I'm going to use some kiln dried uh, birch wood to get sort of a fast but not a really long lasting fire just so we could heat soak our five inches of uh, insulation on my La Piazza Piccolo wood fired pizza oven. Uh, and that's going to make sure that everything's nice and hot so that as we start to let our fire die down, we barely need any, uh, you know, BTU in order to sustain low and slow temperature. So I'm going to be using peach wood chunks for the sustenance in order to keep the fire going uh, and see how long we can ride that residual heat that we built up from our first fire. Let me take you back to a little bit earlier today, catch you all up, and when you rejoin me present time, uh, we'll see how close we are getting ready to move on to part two of our cook. Okay, our pork shoulder has just come out of the refrigerator after an overnight dry brine. And so all I did to prep this is just score the fat cap with a little bit of a crosshatch so we get our seasoning down in there. And then for our dry brine rub, this is just uh, my salt, pepper, and garlic ratio. So I'll put the exact amount down below, but it's just uh, made up with a little bit of a couple caps of fresh uh, ground uh, cracked pepper. Uh, diamond crystal uh, kosher salt, and then Lowry's. And if you can't find Lowry's, uh, I'll also put how to make your own uh, with the exact ratios down below. So that is what's on for our dry and brine rub. So all I want to do now to get this ready to go in the oven, and so the game plan is we're just going to truss it up. So I've got a little bit of butcher's twine here so that uh, it's nice and tight. We don't get areas that dry out. And then I'm going to just uh, transfer this rack onto my uh, Romertoff here, uh, ceramic coated uh, porcelain oven barbecue safe uh, cook pan because the idea is we're going to put this on top put a little bit of uh, chicken stock uh, in uh, down here let it cook as the fat starts to collect down in here we'll drop our pork shoulder in later on cover it in foil and finish it all up so I'll take you fast forward while I uh, quickly truss this up okay so that looks good I'll just set this on top add in some of our chicken stock here. Let's go check on our fire. Okay, so our fire is um, starting to break down into a nice coal bed just to help last uh, make this last a little bit longer. I'm just going to add a couple pieces of Fogo charcoal in here. And then so we're getting good smoke, I'm going to add some peak, uh, sorry, some peach wood chunks. And this will be providing our wood smoke flavor for the entire cook. So I want to wait till these combust. So I'm just going to place them into our coal bed here. We'll give that a couple minutes to start burning clean and then we'll add in our pork. Okay, our two wood chunks have combusted. I'm getting nice, clean smelling smoke. So let's slide in our roast. I've just set this on a cast iron half moon since the pork uh, right now before it shrinks just sits outside the protection of my cook pan and I don't want any pork fat rendering down 
onto my uh, uh, the deck of my pizza oven. Uh, we can maybe remove that later once we drop it down in. Let's get our door. This is gonna help retain some heat, get a little bit more mileage out of our wood. And we're also going to adjust our damper down to about 30% open. So we are less than two hours into this cook. We already need to pivot. I've been doing my best to keep the fire low and slow, but I can already, I can already tell, I think we might have gone over ambitious on our early fire, as I've not been able to get nice and steady below 300 degrees. As such, that 300 degrees with a little bit of open fire our bark is getting to the point where it can't really take much more heat. Uh, it's gonna be at risk of burning and we have not yet uh, boiled off all of that chicken stock. So I added a little bit too much chicken stock and got a little too much heat. I still think we can salvage it. We've had, you know, two hours in the smoke, but I think it's time to get this off, drain out a little bit of that excess uh, chicken stock uh, um, braising liquid that we put in and see if we could drop our uh, pork shoulder down into our cook pot cover it in foil now so it's nice and protected and then continue on exactly where we are where we're using that residual heat and keep our fire burning nice and low and slow until we get to probe tender i didn't mention this before but i have been placing wood splits right here in front of the fire just like i would do on my offset so they dry out so that when we do add them to the fire uh, they combust and don't put off a lot of good smoke so that's why you see a wood chunk there back in door and since our bark was looking good, but we weren't anywhere close to our internal temperature, the plan is to check on in a couple hours. Okay, we are now at the four hour mark in foil. I took a quick peek at the three hour mark and we still weren't close. So let's go over together, open up our oven, pull it out and do a test for probe temperature as well as feel and see if we are getting ready to now rest this for an hour or so before we come back and shred it up and see how we did. Okay, let's remove our door. Still got a little fire going, some nice coal bed in case we need to add a little bit more wood. I'll just push that to the back. Let's get our pulled pork out. Over to the table so we can check it out. Ooh, that looks good. Let's get a temperature here. Still feels like we could use a little bit more time we are close, so we're right at 200, but that feels a little bit tight. So what I'm looking for there is not just the temperature, but this should feel like we are going into a jar of peanut butter uh, that's at room temperature. This feels like the bottom half of the peanut butter jar uh, has got maybe a little bit of ice in it or is near approaching ice, so that's just a little bit tight. So even though we are seeing temperatures that are close to what we want, I'm not quite there. And as we've uh, sort of softened up here a little bit just from being covered, I think I'm actually gonna finish it now uh, a little bit open so that we can um, just crisp up anything that's gotten a little bit soggy. So let's get this back into the oven. So I think we're only about five, 10 minutes away, but I'm gonna take this last wood chunk that I've been preheating, just nestle that into the coals, uh, the coal bed there that we pushed earlier towards the back. And uh, that should catch fairly quick. Let me go grab our pulled pork. There we go, slide that back in. And already that piece of wood has caught. So we're just gonna give that about 10, 15 more minutes just to help crisp up the top. Let that continue cook. I'll put the door back on and we will check about every 15 minutes or so until we get that probe feel that we want. Very similar temperature. Our starting to get some of that bark back. It looks like it's uh, crisping up nice. So we haven't really shot up, but See, that part is good. This is what I want right here. And so that's reading, what, 208, almost 209, according to our chef's temps. This is the feel that I want everywhere where there's almost no effort. So I'm gonna give this a couple more minutes, but I think we are nearly there. Okay, our pulled pork has rested for an hour and it <laughs> looks the part. I can't wait to dive in for a taste test. I've also started building our fire back up since the kids are gonna want a pizza as well. So I'll do that as soon as we're done, shredding this up and see if the pizza oven can turn out a pulled pork. I'm so curious to see how this turns out. Let's get nice and close and shred it up. Well, this certainly looks the part. And as you can see, uh, we've done essentially a glorified boat because we've been able to retain a lot of that fat that's rendered out. So I might even need to strain some of it off, but we'll see if we're dry or a little bit too much fat. Let's just uh, remove our butcher's twine here that we've added so we don't end up uh, serving any of that. I'm just, even just pulling the string, you can get a sense for how tender this pork is. It's just falling apart as I'm 
removing the string here. But now that we've got that out of the way and don't have to worry about it, let's just give this a shred. Oh, well, that is tender. It's just falling apart. Well, we know that part's going to be good. I'm, I'm really curious, uh, since we had to manage the top overdoing, we really only had about two hours or so of direct smoke exposure, plus whatever we added at the end, maybe another 45 minutes, uh, just re-crisping up that bark. But the tenderness, this is on the money. Take it fast forward, I get this ready and rejoin you for our taste test. Even after an hour, this is still piping hot. Part of it is it's really cool out here, as you can see my breath is making it look a little bit hotter, but let's grab a piece here, see how we did. That is really tender, but as I was suspecting and maybe a little bit worried of, really light on smoke flavor. And so I think, um, well, let me get another piece here, just make sure I'm not misleading you one more. Tenderness is there. That outside bark, very tasty. Seasonings there, tenderness is there, that bark and the crunch is there. Really the only thing missing for me is the smoke. Compared to what we get doing double indirect on the Joe, where we've ramped up our fire, or definitely, you know, compared to the offset, this is the mildest smoke flavor I've made this side of a pellet grill. But I, I think I sort of knew that going in. I overdid our fire maybe a little bit too aggressively. I still had that rolling up and around that 300 to 330 degree Fahrenheit range. Uh, whereas much later on in the cook, as I let it die down and just take advantage of the five inches of insulation on my pizza oven, I could get away with a much smaller fire. So I definitely think there's signs of life here to go for a version two, where we can get a smaller but clean burning fire to not overdo our outside so that we get even more time for it to radiate in the smoke. But first pass, low and slow on the pizza oven, I'm gonna say, can it smoke? Answers, yes. Can I smoke in the pizza oven? I need a second round to really make this live up to sort of my gold standard uh, for pulled pork. But serve this to a guest who's used to, you know, crock pot restaurant cooking or anything else. I'm gonna say it's the best pulled pork they ever had. And this is before we've added any sauce or anything. It's tender, the bark is crispy, the seasoning is great. And there is a little bit of smoke, but it's two hours of smoke instead of, you know, eight hours of smoke. And so I think that is the only thing holding it back. But I am pleasantly impressed and will definitely do it again. Let me know if there's anything else you'd like to see me try and smoke. Now that we've got a little bit of a learning in terms of how to set up and start adjusting our dampers, go for residual low and slow cooking in a wood fired pizza oven. But I'm going to say that it's absolutely possible and opens up some more exciting ideas for me to try in the new year. That's it for today though. I'm James from Soak and Dad Barbecue signing off. And remember, don't be afraid to fire it up. I see you, Bella. You want some of this? Yeah. Move on. I'm kidding. There you go. It is good.